This video is to demonstrate the setup and usage of the PM609A press, which is operated with the PMR07 control box and a portable air compressor. First, we're gonna make the electrical connections between the control box and the press. We'll start with the connection from the control box to the bottom half of the press. This is indicated on the back of the control box by this symbol where the bottom block is blacked in and the top block is empty. So open the cover, attach the plug, and lock in place. We'll take the other end of this lead and we'll attach it to the bottom press platen. These plugs have a male and female insert on them that prevents you from crossing between the bottom and the top between the control box and the press. So make the connection at the press, close the latch. Now we'll make the connection from the control box to the top press platen, close the latch. The other end of the lead onto the top press platen. We have one more connection to make. That's the small cable here, which attaches on the back of the control box on this plug. Again, latch in place. This cable divides into two so that you have one for the top and the bottom. Latched. Plugged and latched. Those are all the electrical connections between the control box and the press. Next we plug the power supply cord from the compressor into the back of the control box. This is 230 volt single phase power, which powers the compressor. Finally, once we have all the other power connections made between the compressor, the control box, and the press, we want to plug the control box power cord into a 230 volt three phase power supply with on a minimum 30 amp breaker. Position your press in a convenient working area and then remove the top by removing the bolts that hold the two press halves together and lifting the top from the bottom. Next we'll remove the hold down bars which are used to hold the belt ends in position. Loosen the thumb screws at either end. Remove the hold down bar and set them aside. Okay, to prepare the press for loading the belt into the press, first we put a piece of felt cloth on the bottom press platen, it's called Molliton cloth. We cover that with a sheet of Teflon. The Teflon is a release media so that the belt won't stick to the cloth. Now we're going to load the ends of the belt into the press. We'll introduce the first end of the belt and we want to center the belt from side to side as well as center it along the press center lengthwise. Then we use the hold down bar to secure the belt end in place. Just close loosely at this point. Next, on either side of the belt. Under the hold down bar to hold it in place. And now we'll tighten both ends of the hold down bar evenly, just snug. It doesn't have to be real tight. This is just to help hold the belt in position during the pressing process. Okay, next we load the second end of the belt into the press. 
mate the fingers together. You want it to be a snug fit and everything laying flat with no overlap. Now put the second hold down bar in place. Reconfirm that the belt is mated snugly together and flat and then go ahead and evenly tighten down the hold down bar on both sides. Again, not a lot of pressure, just snug to hold the belt in place. Now we'll put a sheet of Teflon on the top of the belt. Now we put the top of the press back in place. Insert the two screws that hold the top of the press to the bottom and turn them all the way down until they stop. These only have to be turned down until they're just snug. These are not supplying the pressure. An airbag in the press is going to supply the pressure. Now we're ready to power on the press. Turn the main control to on. After a moment, the value comes up in the display. In order to set the press, we'll press the button mark program. Now that the program but button is illuminated, we can set the top platen temperature, the bottom platen temperature, and the dwell time. So we'll press first the top platen temperature. We'll set that to 165. Next we set the temperature for the bottom platen by depressing the button for the bottom platen. It illuminates and we set it to 165. Next we set the dwell time by pressing the button with the clock symbol on it and set it to 180 and that's 180 seconds of dwell time. Now we press program again to exit the programming mode and we're ready to stop, start the press cycle but first we need to apply the air pressure to the press. Okay, to make the air connection from the portable air compressor to the press, we first plug the T-fitting here into the end of the air hose with the regulator. Next, we plug one of the ends of the air hose into the top press platen, and the other quick disconnect at the end of the air hose into the bottom press platen. So we switch the compressor on, the compressor will power up and fill the small air bottle that's included in the portable compressor. You can see there's now 8 bar air supply there. And with the regulator we'll adjust the air pressure to 2 bar pressure. So right on 2, set. Now the air pressure has been supplied to the press. We're ready to go. Again, if we wanted to double check the programming parameters, we could press program and see that the bottom platen is set to 165, the top platen is set to 165, and the dwell time is set to 180 seconds. So again, press program to exit the programming mode and just press start to begin the press cycle. While the press is heating, these lights for the top and bottom platens will be illuminated. When the press reaches the set temperature on both the top and bottom platens, the dwell time will start and count down the 180 seconds. When the timing cycle starts, you'll see the light above the clock symbol will illuminate, and after the 180 seconds has expired, the snowflake, the light over the snowflake symbol will illuminate, indicating that the fans have turned on in the press to begin cooling the belt back down. If you like, while the press is heating, you can see what temperature each platen is just by switching back and forth between the two, and you can even check on the time, but again, the time won't start counting down until both platens reach the preset temperature of 165 degrees. Okay, now that the cycle has completed, the light over the snowflake has turned off, meaning the press has cooled down to 45 degrees centigrade top and bottom. So at this point we can stop the press, turn off the main power supply. So remove the air hose fitting from the top of the press. You hear the pressure release. 
release the quick disconnect from the bottom of the press. Again, you hear the pressure release. Now we can turn the two bolts that secure the press halves together, remove them, and we can remove the top press platen. So now you can see the belt is sealed all along the zigzag cut with the thermoplastic PVC material. So all we need to do is remove the hold down bars on one side, then the other, remove the hold down bar. The only thing remaining is to trim the side blockers from the belt with the use of a straight edge and a utility knife. Don't perform this operation on the press platen or on the Teflon on the press because you'll ruin it. On a suitable cutting surface, just place the straight edge up against the blocker and trim it away with the utility knife. And there we have our finished belt splice. To prepare the belt ends for joining, we need both ends of the belt cut square. Then on one end of the belt, make a mark four inches back from the end on one side and on the opposite side. Now take the second belt end Overlap it over the first, up to the marks on each side, and ensuring that the edges of the belt are flush with each other. Remove the backing paper. Position the pattern paper so that the edge of the paper is even with the edge of the, the exposed edge of the belt. At this point, you can look at either end of the pattern paper and see where it comes on the pattern and you can adjust the paper from one side to the other to make the pattern even or so that you don't have a very small remainder of one finger on one end or the other. Next apply some additional tape slightly overlapping onto the pattern paper and onto your cutting board. Do this on both belt ends, again, slightly overlapping onto the pattern paper and securing the paper and belt down to the board. What we want to avoid is any shifting of the material during the cutting. It's probably a good idea to even put a piece on either end. The main thing to keep in mind is that we don't want these belt ends to be able to shift at all while we cut the pattern out. Now we're going to cut out the pattern with the cutting chisel and a hammer. We'll simply position the blade over each individual line, pound it through both layers of the belt, and then remove it and continue. I would suggest not to start with the very first cut. Leave that intact to help hold that edge of the belt together and we'll start with the second line. So again, as nearly as possible, put the chisel directly over the line, hammer straight down, and then remove the chisel. Go to the next line, position, hammer, and notice I'm holding the belt down as I remove the chisel so as not to uh, disturb the belt ends. You can see already with the first one, we've cut through both layers of material. You can see the cutting pad below, and that's the result we'll want to have the rest of the way across the belt. And so we're coming to the last couple of fingers on the belt. Want to be careful, of course, with each cut that your blade does intersect the previous cut. You can do that by sticking the end of the blade into the cut and then laying it on your line. And now we're going to finish the last cut on this edge of the belt. And then 
Don't forget, we left the finger on the other end of the belt uncut at the beginning to help hold the belt in place. So now we need to go back and make that last cut off the edge of the belt. Okay, so now we've cut all the way across the belt. We'll remove the tape. And what we're left with is a scrap end and a belt end, a scrap end, and a belt end, and the two belt ends will mate perfectly together, ready to be joined in your Habisit air-cooled press.